Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased to be here. It's not my first time here in, in New Zealand. I spent quite a lot, of a lot of time in Van Eden a couple of years ago, a few years ago. So hopefully it helps me and you to understand to each other because the Kiwi English is a little bit different. Um, it is, it is, it's not easy. Um, <clears throat> I'm here to talk about the, uh, it's a small, small project. We were, we heard some projects, they're huge, but my project, it's tiny. But I would like to talk about it. It's called Differ or Differ. I'm not perfectly familiar with the pronunciation. I think it's, it's Differ. It's abbreviation, it stands for uh, Determinator of Image File Format Properties. <clears throat> but let me start with a little bit of history. Uh, our library is based in a really, really old place, and I was lucky, very lucky, to have my office very close to this place. So if you, if you go to Czech Republic, you should see this place, it's awesome. <laughs> Not my office, I mean that place. <laughs> well, uh, we start with digitization quite early in 1992, and it was a pilot project under UNESCO, and we worked really hard, not me because I wasn't there, but m some of my colleagues, and we won an um, uh, award, uh, Jikshi, if you're familiar with that. Uh, it, was, it was something, it was a big thing. Uh, since then, we digitized extensively and we got something about 10 million pages. And these days, we have been preparing a digit, uh, project which is called Digital National Library. And the goal is uh, to dig digitize something about 26 million pages uh, till 2014, plus we signed a contract with Google and we plan to digitize something about 20 million pages. So as you can see, we have lots of work to do and it comes with some, some challenges I'm going to talk about. Uh, when I came to, to National Library of Czech Republic, uh, I figured out that we've been using three format files. we uh, using TIFF, JPEG, and Deja Vu. Uh, is there anybody who actually uh, knows the format Deja Vu? Can you raise your hands? One, two, anyone else? And is there any, anybody who actually is using these formats? Just one. So where, can you actually stand up and say where are you from and what do you do? Which kind of project is it? Um, right. OK. Thank you for that. That's interesting for me. Uh, uh, so what we do, we, we digitize into the TIFF and we migrate all these data into the, into the JPEG. Uh, unfortunately, we delete all these TIFFs. So what we ended up with is just JPEG, we call it master, and we migrate JPEG into the, into the Deja Vu file and we, we use these as, a, as a user copies. Uh, the reason we decided in 90s for Deja Vu was the file size. It's tiny. Unfortunately, this uh, from uh, today point of view, Deja Vu, it's not the best format. And this chart was my proof for, for my director or my boss that we can actually do, we can actually use different format to do the same, same thing and in a better way, basically. I, I test different formats like a BMP, TFS, LZW, compression, uh, PNG, and other formats. And luckily, I found a JPEG 2000. Uh, what I found was that we can actually use just one format, I'm talking about JPEG 2000, and we can, we can cover all our spectrum. So we can use it for masters, for lossless masters, we can use it for user copies. So it's a it's, it's very great format. But I'm not here to talk about JPEG 2000, unfortunately, I can, I can talk forever about this. But I have to, I have to mention this. Um, we cooperated with some other libraries, like Moravian Library, it's placed in Brno. Uh, our library is placed in Praha. It's a national. It's a it's a capital city of Czech Republic, and these guys they they do really good stuff with JPEG 2000 uh, with migration and so on. And but one day they sent us two copies and they said, "Hey guys, we we migrate a few thousand JPEGs into the JPEG 2000. You know, like these two, and uh, they they use if you're familiar with PSNR. It's I'm going to talk about it later on. It's a peak signal noise ratio thing. So they use like 50, 50 decibels of PSNR. So it has to, uh, it's supposed to be visual lossless. So these copies are supposed to be the same. And they send us these copies and we look at these copies with my colleagues and my colleague says, oh, it's perfectly fine. They, they okay. And I say, 
Come on, this is national treasury. We have to be a little bit more careful. So what I did, I print them out. And uh, it sounds simple, but what I found was that, that the JPEG 2000, it's slightly darker. Can you see that? It's, it's just a little bit, a little bit darker. So I put it in Photoshop and found that, that there's a tone shift in it. You know, it's basically, it's, it's just a little bit darker. And I use the Photoshop again, and I merge these layers together. And if you see black, like 100% black here, it means there's no chance ch change. And if it's slightly uh, lighter, it means there was some kind of shift, color shift. So I sent this feedback to them, and they never replied back. I think they got angry to me. <clears throat> uh, that's the reason why I uh, mentioned JPEG 2000. Um, I was, when I started JPEG 2000, it seems to be very complicated. It, it's not easy, it's not easy, but if you have uh, good information, if you get used to it, it's, it's not that complicated, but you have to have some suggestions. You really have to know what you're going to do with your stuff, with, with your pictures. So I, I collect lots of, lots of um, uh, information uh, from all around the world, like British Library recommendation, the Library of Congress, and so on. So I compare them, and I, I come up with this uh, recommendation for National Library. So it's designed for, um, it's a recommendation for master copy, it's here, uh, for production master copy. The first one, it's for books and particles. And the other one, it's for large scale, format, for large -scale formats, like, like maps and uh, manuscripts. And the good thing about this, if you're happy with that, if you like it, you most of them will come to use it, okay? Uh, only thing I'm still working on, I'm thinking on it, it's a, it's a question if we really need lossless compression for our masters. Uh, there are some discussions about, about migrations, you know, if you migrate uh, on and on, some, you know, you, you, you might lose some information. So this is a huge topic, uh, we don't have much time to talk about it, but uh, I really like to, to talk to someone about, about this if you really need it. Because basically when we use lossless compression for, for our masters, basically we store lots of noise. But that's, that's a big decision. I believe that if you have some recommendation, it has to be easy. It has to be straightforward. It has to be designed for humans, not just for, for programmers. So these are command lines for Kakadu. We, we decided to use Kakadu for JPEG 2000. So again, if, you, if you're happy with these recommendations, you're most, most than welcome to use these command lines. <clears throat> uh, this slide, it's, in my opinion, it's slightly shocking. Uh, the reason behind is, um, actually, I was pre presenting this slide in Library of Congress last year, in November, I think, and there were people we, um, interested in JPEG 2000, and they didn't even think about it. So what I did, it's, it's a very nice experiment. Um, can you hear me on this microphone? Hello? Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, the first lane, it's just, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a TIFF. Uh, there's no compression involved. So what I did, I, I, I take a TIFF and I display it on, on my computer, on my print screen. And I, I did print screen. That's, that's simple than that. And then I uh, create uh, in Kakadu uh, some, some JPEGs, 2000. And the first one has a compress ratio of 1 to 8, the second one 1 to 20, and the last one 1 to 30 compress ratio, right? So this, this is really small, really big compression. The, the first compression, it's visually lossless. So uh, by naked eye, you can't actually see different between these two, but between the TIFF or that one and that one, you can actually see a different. So what I did, um, I compare TIFF with uh, JPEG 2001 to 30. I match these pictures together in Photoshop, and I come up with this picture, right? Nothing special. And uh, now, we're playing with Photoshop, that's a green part. And then I did exactly the same with Kakadu uh, library. It's a, it's a part of uh, Kakadu, Kakadu software. And it's getting more interesting right now. And I did exactly the same with the viewer uh, in far view. And this is truly shocking. <clears throat> we pay lots of attention, uh, set uh, good uh, resolution when we do scanning, uh, good color depth, uh, if the, the, the image is sharp enough, we spend so much energy thinking about it, and then we think, okay, the, the, the 
JPEG, it's not good enough, good enough because it has some artifacts. So let's use JPEG 2000 or TIFF. But in the end, if the end user uses different viewers, like a Photoshop or, or Kiru Show or Inform View, everybody see a different thing. This is, this is not, it's not good news. It's bad. It's very, very bad. So I, I, I did this on the different pictures. The only different about this picture is it's a 60 PPI, 600 PPI, sorry. And I scanned this by myself, just be sure that, that I didn't make any mistake. It's exactly the same e experiment. And I'm not sure if you can see it on the presentation. I think you, you can, right? So there are differences. It's not a big deal, but you have to know that if you're really careful how you, how you do your data, how you create your data, how do you preserve your data, you also have to think uh, about how you display your data or which kind of software you're using. So a few months ago, I was thinking, um, would it be nice to have a tool, some kind of decision maker, which helps you to, to, to say, well, my data is fine, my data is not corrupted, my data is it's perfectly fine, or you know, something like that. So I was thinking about it, and uh, I come up with an application called Dipher. Uh, it's a proof of concept. It's still not publicly available, but we we would like to do, we would like to put it put it um, online soon. So what it does, uh, we decided to implement to, to to support these files because we already using these these uh, sorry not not files these uh, file formats because we already using these file formats in our library TIFF JPEG JPEG 2000 and Deja Vu and we planning to implement PNG and PDF in the future. So. It does identification. Basically, it, it, it gives you information uh, that the JPEG you applied in uh, this application, it's actually JPEG and the version like 1.01 .01 or something like that. It does characterization. So it tells you how many pixels this picture has, if it's grayscale or, in, or it's in color and so on. Uh, it does validation. So it tells you if your file is well informed and valid or not. Uh, I'm a visual person, so I really like pictures, so, so I, I really care that, that uh, we implement as visual information as possible in it. So, so we have some, some, some visual information, so you don't have to be rocket uh, science, I, I mean, uh, you don't have to be a um, scientist to understand what, what is going on with your picture. Of course, we have the scientific stuff, num some numbers. Uh, it detects glitches. Glitches they are like artifacts. So. Uh, so how many of you uh, uh, have a digital camera? I guess all of you, right? So have you ever seen on your, on your hard drive that, that your image was corrupted? Have you seen it? Or in, on, on your memory stick as well? So these things are ca called glitches. And uh, JP2 profile validator. I think this is, this is great stuff because I, I haven't found a tool which actually tells you uh, something more about your J JPEG 2000 uh, or the tool which uh, follows some recommendations. So we actually add our recommendation in it. So if you upload JPEG 2000 in it, it tells you if it's according to your recommendations or not. So what is in it? Uh, I'm really happy that, that some, some people before me in the morning and afternoon session talking about some of these tools like New Zealander Metadata Extractor or, or uh, Droid. And there are some, some others like it's brain new tool, JP Lizer, uh, right here. We just planning to implement this one for JPEG 2000. And we trying to implement these tools. So, so the, the, the tool I'm working on, the uh, Dipher, it's basically a wrapper. We're using exist existing tools and we add the extra layer like uh, uh, graphic, uh, user interface to give you good feedback because if you're working with, for example, with Jhof, you know how difficult it's not difficult, but it's not user friendly. It doesn't have a GUI, right? So we we provide this. So I would like to show you how it looks like. Uh, you have two options if you if you use Dipher. You can upload just one picture, but it's boring. It, it gives you just uh, some some properties of, of the file. The, the more interesting part is if you upload two pictures, like in this case, this is it's for just one picture, this is the second picture. 
And what I did here, I, I applied JPEG 2000 lossless and TIFF. There's no compression involved in it. And the software, we, 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 using, we generate hashes. So it's, it's very hard to say if these two pictures are the same, but I, we figure out a technique. Uh, we, we generate a hash right here. And if, if, when these hashes are the same, it, it tells you the visual information. It's 100% the same. It doesn't matter which kind of file format you're using. It tells you this information. I think this is, this is great stuff. And also, we have, a, we have a comparison picture here. If it's 100% black, it means these pictures are the same. We generate a PSNR here. Uh, that's a peak signal noise ratio. Basically, again, if it's infinity, it means these pictures are 100% the same. And for visual information, we introduce here these um, histograms. And if you look at them, they, they're exactly the same. So you don't, you don't really need to see these pictures, and you, you know these pictures are the same. And this is the histogram for, for the com, uh, compressment picture. And if it's like this, it means there's nothing. It's black, so they're the same. In this case, I upload JPEG 2000 lossy and JPEG 2000 lossless. If you, if you look, look at closely to this picture, I'm not sure if you can, you can see it from that distance, but it's, there are some glitches. I mean, it's, it's corrupted. It's pretty, pretty high compression. I think it's 1 to 100 or something like that. If you, if you look at closely to the comparison picture, you can actually see these artifacts. So visually, you see these pictures are not the same. And obviously, if you, if you compare these hashes, it, it tells the information the hashes are not the same, these pictures are not the same. It's that easy. And it gives you PSNR, 26.14 26 decibels. It's, well, it's a visual lo lossy you know, migration, let's say. Uh, in this case, just show you how it works. We, we generate uh, histograms for each channel. R for red, uh, green, G for green, and uh, B for blue. So you can actually see histogram for each color. And in this case, because it's a black and white picture, you can actually see there's just, just one histogram. So it's, you know, we really care to do it visual. Obviously, uh, these hashes aren't the same. So these pictures are not the same, and PSNR, it's pretty, pretty low in this case. Uh, so you can play with this tool quite a lot. So what I did here, I, I take the, the grayscale picture, and I add just one pixel in it. You can't see it but naked eye. You know, if you have, if you have, even if you have full screen this picture on your computer, you can't see it. But this application tells you that these pictures are not the same. So it, it could be considered consider as, a, as a glitch or mistake if you migrate from one JPEG to TIFF or from TIFF to JPEG. This, not just one pixel, but something like that can, can occur. So it's just, just test. And everything seems to be fine. You can't see any different. Only thing uh, uh, how you can find these pictures are the same is here. It tells you these hashes are the same. Well, these pictures, they're not obviously the same. You can play with this quite a lot. I, I add some, some uh, other colors like cyan, magenta, yellow, and if you understand how, how histogram works, you, actually, you can actually figure out what's going on, but uh, we don't have that much time to talk about it. In this case, what I did, I just, on the second picture, I just add one pixel line here, right here. And if you look at a histogram closely, you can actually see it here. So again, it's a visual information telling you that these pictures are the same. Uh, this is the real situation. Uh, I corrupt the second file. I love corrupt files. I, I, I really like it. I have really clever tool, and it's um, it's, it's it's very simple. What what it does? It swaps some zeros and uh, uh, and you know it just swap a few things in it or just short bit stream. So it's very simple. So you have to corrupt like 100 files to come up with something like that. And if it's a peer, I'm very, very happy because you know, it's, it's a very nice example of corrupted file. So I, I, I corrupt this file, I upload it uh, into, the, into this application, and you, know, you can actually see how it works. 
Uh, just would like to tell you something about these properties. I, I didn't mention it yet. Here, for each files, uh, it's usually it's much longer. I mean, each format has a, has a different properties. For JPEG 2000 or for uh, Deja Vu, it's usually very, very long. I'll show you later on. So in this case, uh, uh, we look at the validation uh, part. So in this case, it tells you, uh, the JHOF tells you that this file is perfectly fine. It's well informed and valid. It's a great news. And when you look at the other, other picture, again, it tells you the, <laughs> the file it's well informed and valid. We, we struggle with JHOF quite a lot. I mean, I'm sure <laughs> And there's some, someone is smiling over there because uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? JHOF, it's not working. Uh, it's just not working all the time. It's it's pain to work with JHOF. It's a great tool, but we're waiting for the, the, the second version. It's they preparing a new version of JHOF. Hopefully, it's it's going to work much better than, than that, that one. It doesn't support JPEG 2000 at all, but I just want to show you that uh, this application is not perfect yet. Uh, in this case, I upload TIFF and Deja Vu. Uh, Deja Vu, it's always lossy, but in this case, I corrupt this file. So if you look at closely, it's, it's actually corrupted. It, it has some, some glitches in it. And uh, in this case, j says for TIFF, because per TIFF was perfectly fine. It's well formed and valid. And finally, it says the file, it's bad form and invalid. This is great news, but you never sure with, with j -Hoff, but in this case, it's, it's correct. Uh, here, uh, the first file is a JPEG 2000, the second file is a JPEG 2000, and it's corrupted. It, it's it's a very, very badly corrupted. You can see the, the square, the, the square thing here. And uh, if you look at the, the, what the j -Hoff says, again, it's well informed and valid. It just doesn't work for JPEG 2000. So that's why we, uh, we implement more tools. We, we, we implement yeah, like Exif, uh, Exif tool, or j -Hope, Droid, and other tools, just to be sure that, that if one tool doesn't work properly, the other tool works. So what we are going to do in, in the future is that, that we will have uh, all these properties, and there will be, um, mm, if all properties are the same, for example, when the validator, like j -Hope says, this file is perfectly fine. And the other validator, like JPLizer, which is not implemented yet, says that's perfectly fine as well. This line is going to be green. So it gives you inf like really nice, easy, understandable information that, that two tools or three tools says this is fine. When one, file, one, when one uh, tool says that uh, the file is not correct, uh, it's corrupted, or and out of tools tells you the, these perfectly fine, the line will be in red. So we're just trying to, to do it visually and easy to understand. So this is, when you scroll in different, a little bit, little bit lower, this is the second, second page, let's say. And uh, there are some properties, but we don't have that much time to talk about all of them. But what I, like, what I would like to mention here, it's, it's this part, this chart. Uh, it, uh, it has, uh, we put our recommendations in it. So if you upload JPEG 2000 into the Dipher, you can actually see if it's, uh, if it's same or how same it is with our recommendation. So uh, if the line is green, it means it's the same with our recommendation. If it's red, it means it's different. Uh, the, the yellow box here, uh, it's actually, it contains actual value of the uploaded file, and the, the, the blue box, uh, it's our recommendation. And we have this for master copies and production master copies. And also, you can create your own file. I can show you how it looks like online. Uh, Follow-up study. Um, we, our application, it's, we're using different tools, and it's kind of mesh up the, right now, so we we going to rewrite it into the Java completely. We apply for Google Summer of Code and we are very, very happy, so we were accepted. So if, if you if you into Java, if you're really good, and if you like this project, let me know. We can, we can just, we can use you <laughs> to help us. 
of course, it's, it's open source. Uh, we're going to implement MSSCM. It's something like PSNR, but it's, it's, it's based on human vision. So it's, it's much uh, more precise than PSNR. Um, uh, we're trying to understand more if we really need uh, a lossless compression for, for masters. It's part of this application as well. And of course, it's not just about this application. We would like to use this application into our digitization and migration tool in our library. So we split this application apart later on and we use different chunks for diff as, as tools for quality control in our own workflow. So this is the link for this application. So you most than welcome to, to, to try it by yourself. But I have to say that we have few versions of this application. This, is, this one, it's the most stable these days, uh, but it's not complete. There are not like plugins for deja vu, uh, but it's, well, it, it's stable. You, you can try it, but we, we, we're working on it. And I think in three months, because we in the Google Summer code, so in three months, it's going to be much better. Um, uh, I'm still talking about some, some things, but I like real stuff. So I would like to show you how it looks like in a, in a real, uh, real world. This is the application and you can, you can choose like any kind of file, which is already there and just hit a button execute here. <clears throat> Hopefully it works. Yeah, it works. So yeah, that's how it looks like. It looks very simple, but it's not that easy to, to kind of do these things. Uh, here, you can actually create your own, own uh, profile, JPEG 2000 profile. It's saved in uh, XML file, and you can, you can compare your JPEG 2000 files, uh, files with uh, our recommendations or with your recommendations. So yeah, so there are some, some other examples so this is really nice glitch. I like it. I make it by myself. <laughs> See how, how, how bad it is? I love it. And yeah, this is like TIFF, TIFF and corrupted deja vu. It's very hard to corrupt deja vu. I mean, it has some kind, it has some kind of tools in it. It's same with JPEG 2000. It's, it's very robust. It's very robust. I mean, in a good way, if you, if you want to see it visually. So there are some, some examples. This is pretty good. I didn't corrupt this by myself. That's a shame. It's like, it's very nice. So see that? And that's the last one. So yeah, that's, that's how it works. Uh, we're planning to implement uh, more tools in it. So it's in progress. It's a proof of concept. It's a beta version these days. But if you have any suggestions, questions, you're most than welcome to ask. Write me, write me email or just talk to me. We can, we can cooperate and Maybe the, something, it will work in future. So thank you for your patience, for your time. And if you have any questions, please ask.